Hi everyone, so we are wrapping up our brass instrument family by talking about the tuba and the euphonium. So most of us have heard of the tuba. Um, the tuba came from an instrument called the ophiclide. Um, it was similar to the tuba, but it didn't have vowels. Uh, it was popular for about 50 years before the invention of the tuba. Um, but even today, music that was written for the ophiclide can be played really easily by the tuba without too much adjustment. Um, they can kind of pick it up and go. Um, it plays the lowest notes of the orchestra, which is so it plays a lot of the same things as the double bass from the string family. Um, and then eventually the sousaphone was developed around the late 1800s, uh, specifically for marching band. It plays almost the exact same way as the tuba, but instead of having to sit and hold a tuba in your lap, the sousaphone wraps around the player and then the bell comes up above their head. And this just makes it so the, the player doesn't have to hold up this giant instrument as they're marching around. Like it kind of frees their hands up a little bit more and lets them support it with their body. Um, so typically when you see that kind of wrap around, it's really like a tuba but it's a sousaphone we just call it something different because it wraps around and plays slightly different um the euphonium i think is an instrument that not a lot of us hear about or know about but it's a really important and really cool instrument um it's almost identical to an instrument called the baritone horn um the only difference is that the euphonium is a conical bore meaning that it starts small and gets big all the way through, whereas the baritone is cylindrical, meaning that the tubing is the same length all the way through until the very end. Um, they are pretty much interchangeable. You can use one or the other however you feel. Um, it just depends on the sound that you want. Um, both of these also come from the Ophiclide, but they play slightly higher notes. They've had a little bit more of an adjustment. Um, there are a lot of different versions of the euphonium, uh, just a lot of different adjustments that can be made, uh, and it's just totally up to the player, really. Uh, but typically when we see them in a marching band, which is a lot of times where we see euphonium, they can be held much like the trumpet. Instead of sitting in someone's lap or being held with the bell facing up like that, they can be held like a trumpet where the bell faces out and they rest the back part of it on their shoulder. And that's to kind of support some of that weight because it is a pretty big instrument and you don't want to be holding it up. But it can be really straining on the player. Uh, both the tuba and the euphonium or the sousaphone and the euphonium uh, if you see people in marching band with those instruments, they are strong. They have to be able to hold those big instruments up. They are working really hard, uh, so always keep that in mind. Um, I've attached a euphonium and tuba duet so that you can hear these two instruments working together. Um, I think that euphonium and tuba duets are really underrated. They're, they're instruments that work really, really well together, and we just don't see them together uh, on their own very much so I hope you guys really like that duet and then I've also attached a video that is Simple Gifts by Erin Copeland um, this is a really really famous song but it's done by a brass quintet a brass quintet typically includes um, two trumpets a French horn a trombone and a tuba or euphonium and that kind of gives it that big range of sound um, but it's a really, really gorgeous performance. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, and we are going to explore a whole new family of instruments next week. Kind of a hodgepodge and a bit of a surprise. So I will see you then. I hope you guys have enjoyed learning all about brass instruments. Bye.